Creating visual effects, especially if you want them to actually look good, is hard. And unfortunately, spotting badly done visual effects is really easy because our brain is trained to spot anything that's different, doesn't match or seems out of place. So in this quick video, I want to share with you five super simple but crucial steps to instantly make your visual effects look better and more realistic. Nothing I'm going to share here is edge cutting or difficult, but I see so many videos on the web where these basic steps have been missed and always just ends up looking like someone glued a tomato on a stack of pancakes. Also, while I will be using Adobe After Effects, you can apply the same techniques in any video compositing program of your choosing. But now, remembering that I used the word quick, let's jump right into it. No matter what visual effect you're trying to put together, whether it's 3D rendered elements or as I have here, a green screen clip that you're trying to insert into a new scene, you need to make sure that the lighting and the colors match. For example, in this clip here, I made sure to fill my green screen shot with a light in the top left hand corner to match up with the sunlight falling through the crumbled cave entry in the background image. And you need to do the same and match up the lighting if you're rendering something in a 3D program that you intend to insert into the shot. During compositing, you then need to color match the clips. You can use any effect you want. Personally, I love using the curves effect because it's quick and versatile and then match the brightness as well as the red, green and blue channels up to make your insert sit nicely in the shot. Remember, you're not trying to go for highest contrast or best colors or the whitest whites. You're trying to make these two clips blend together and you can often get away with some dirty tricks if you're working with a challenging composite. Whenever you're compositing multiple pieces of footage together, besides lighting and color, you also need to make sure that the level of blur as well as the noise levels of the clips match so they feel like they were shot on the same camera under the same conditions. For example, for this effect here, I added just a little bit of blur to these 3D rendered destruction elements because they were a little bit too sharp to fit the shot that I wanted to insert them into. In terms of noise, the elements I've rendered already had a suitable level of noise to match the shot, but if your clip doesn't have the same level of noise, you can easily apply a noise effect and tweak the settings to make sure that the clips you're compositing match. Again, we're not shooting for perfectly sharp or no noise, we're shooting for the best match to make your visual effects more realistic. Here's another thing that needs to match, motion blur. Whether it's 2D graphics for effects or 3D rendered elements, all elements you're compositing together need to have the same level of motion blur to blend well together. If you're working with animated layers in After Effects, you can simply enable the motion blur switch on the individual layers. And you can also come into the composition settings and under the advanced tab, you'll find settings that control the shutter angle and the sampling used for the motion blur. If you're rendering elements from a 3D program, you can either bake the motion blur in during rendering or apply effects such as CC Force Motion Blur or other motion blur plugins to add it back in during compositing. Unless you're a ghost, you will likely have a shadow and a reflection. Whether you're compositing a person, a monster or some energy effects into a shot, think about how the surfaces in the original shot should react and interact with the new elements you're compositing into to make the effect believable. In this shot here, due to the bright sun, surely I would cast a shadow towards the bottom right. Now there's lots of different techniques to add shadows, reflections and lighting, ranging from complex and professional to what I'm going for here, which is just cheap and dirty. But adding interactions between your background plate and the elements you're compositing into will really take your visual effects to the next level. Have you ever heard the term sandwich artist before? It's often used, and I hope always in a loving context, to refer to compositing professionals in the industry because they excel at layering many different visual elements on top of each other. Now, if you think of making a sandwich, you know what binds everything together into one cohesive breakfast? A sandwich press. Whether you're creating a visual effect, the best way to help all of your layers blend together in the end and feel cohesive is to put them all through the same process. And that's usually where the final color grading comes in. Once you're happy with the visual effect itself, apply a final color grading or color adjustment or a common effect over all layers together. This final color grading process, like the sandwich press, will make all of your individual layers feel like they belong together and make your visual effects look more realistic as a result. And that's all this to it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to support me and watch more of my content. Also, do leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.